Hi there, my name is Soren Meibom, and I'm a visual artist. I'm also a scientist, and in some of my artwork, I'm experimenting with using science to enrich and add dimensions to my art. And that is what I would like to tell you about in this video today. So let me just show you an example. In this series of mixed media pieces, I wanted to reconstruct the dramatic pictures from inside the human body made possible by modern medical imaging. By essentially painting with images and results from medical imaging research, and thereby making a special connection to the objects depicted and the imaging techniques used. So for example, the inspiration for this piece was the X-ray of the human thorax, showing us the grand architecture of the human skeleton. We each carry within our chests this beautiful and strong and flexible, almost cathedral-like structure, protecting our vital organs and nerves. And the picture is reconstructing the chest x-ray by combining collage of data tables, graphs, and images from medical imaging research with painting and drawing and writing of figures and text and formulas relevant to the history and physics of the x-ray imaging technique. And it is thereby adding a dimension of scientific knowledge to the artwork. As a scientist, I find scientific data and results and graphs and diagrams visually interesting because they're telling us a truthful story about how some part of our world works. Whether it's above the clouds and the scale of light years or it's beneath our skin on the scale of atoms, the language of science through numbers and equations and carefully selected words is giving us honest and objective views of the universe we live in. And that can lead to authentic and fascinating patterns and imagery when we convert the scientific data and results into illustrations that help us understand what nature is telling us. Look, for example, at this curious collection of colored dots. To me, this image is not only interesting, but beautiful. And the dots are not randomly scattered across the canvas, but they have been placed in a way to form an intriguing and almost organic shape with varying spatial density and certain colors occupying certain parts. So the artist is clearly expressing and communicating something with the way these dots have been placed and colored. Only in this case, the artists are scientists, or more specifically astronomers, and the colored dots are measurements of tens of thousands of stars in our Milky Way galaxy. In fact, this diagram, this piece of scientific art, has helped astronomers, and by extension all of us, answer some of the most fundamental questions about the stars and the cosmos. Like, how do stars shine and for how long? How big and how old is the universe? And many, many more. So as you can see, there is artistic beauty in science. And scientists collect and organize knowledge about pretty much everything each of us do every day. Because while the term science is most often associated with the big natural sciences like physics and chemistry and biology, um, it's much broader than that. And it spans the social sciences like history and psychology, anthropology, economics, and so on, and the formal sciences, the logical sciences, like mathematics and statistics, computer science, etc., to the applied sciences like medicine and engineering and business and law, and many, many more. So science is relevant to all that we do and experience, and of course it can be used when creating art, and used in a way to make the artistic expression broader and deeper. So, as an artist, I want to paint with paint, but I also want to paint with science. Here's another series of mixed media pieces that were commissioned to celebrate and promote the participation of Danish Olympic rowers in the 2019 Head of the Child's Rowing Regatta here in Boston. My goal here was to not only uh, portray the simple beauty of the sport of rowing, but also its complexity 
and the brutal physical and competitive and mental discipline it demands. And to do so with recognizable and dramatic motives, layered with history and physics and engineering and physiology, to give a relevant scientific context to the objects depicted. This piece titled M1, referring to the rowing jargon for the men's single skull discipline, depict a dramatic scene of a competitive single skull rower in action. And intentionally, at first glance, that is what you see. But the rower and his shell are floating on a sea of scientific information all pertaining specifically to the physiological, biomechanical, and physical and engineering aspects of the single skull rower and his shell, as well as to the competitive history of the discipline. Let me show you a few examples. The water is single skull racing time data, overlaid with graphs representing measurements over the cycle of an oar stroke of the velocity, acceleration, and angles of a competitive single skull rower's legs, torso, and oars and shell. The repetitive and cyclical patterns of these curves simulate the small-scale surface wave patterns of water. Then, in the water to the lower right of the shell is the shell acceleration curve, with a detailed explanation of why the rowing shell accelerates and decelerates the way it does over the stroke cycle with the mechanics of each phase of the stroke explained in words and captured in pictures of a female single skull rower. And each of the lane markers display the design of an Olympic medal going back in time from Tokyo in 2020 to Munich in 1972. And in the water surrounding the lane markers, you can find the nationality and the gold medal winning times for women and men at those particular Olympic Games. And in the torso and arms and legs of the rower are imagery of the oxygen-carrying hemoglobin protein and cross-sectional microscopic views of the three types of muscle fibers, the ratio of which is so important to competitive rowers. In this next series, I'm exploring the evolution of the modern human over the past three million years. The goal of the project is to use visual art to tell this remarkable evolutionary story of our human ancestors. Starting with Homo habilis in East Africa two and a half million years ago, each piece in this series paints a portrait of these early humans by displaying scientifically derived knowledge about their facial features and physical stature and characteristics about the era in which they existed and their geographical spread and migration patterns. The artwork also included information about the tools and technology each species had developed and of their brain size, cognitive ability, culture, diet, types of shelter, etc., etc. The piece portraying our species, Homo sapiens, is still to come as my attention has been temporarily diverted to a project about a topic that is very near and dear to our species of modern humans. My first love in life was the game of European football, or soccer as it's being called in some parts of the world. Growing up in Denmark, I spent most of my childhood and youth with a ball in my feet. And so when I was asked to do a SIAD project on football, it was an easy sell because it combines three of my lifelong passions, art, science, and football. And it's a wonderful challenge because the game of European football is the most popular sport in the world. It is being played by hundreds of millions of people of all ages and all walks of life and followed by billions more. It's a game that makes a special connection to us. It emulates our lives, our wins and our losses, our identity and our cultures. It's a game that can be played by two kids in the backyard or by two professional teams in a stadium with 100,000 spectators. It's a game that is, on one hand, easy to watch and comprehend, and yet it holds extraordinary levels of complexity and variations in styles of play. 
It's a game that has evolved and improved fast over the past century. And yet it seems like we're just starting to scratch the surface of its true potential. So I have set out to, with the help of science, uncover and communicate through visual art this um, multidimensional complexity and beauty that is sustaining and fueling uh, the magnetism that the game of football has on people. I want to create artwork that tries to celebrate and captivate the richness and the history of this beautiful game. And so I started with the central object of the game, and for many of us, the best toy we've ever had, the ball. The construction and design of the football has gone through many changes over the past century. Changes that hand in hand with the improved physical fitness and technical abilities of the players have made the game faster and more entertaining and more focused on controlling the ball itself. And science has played and continues to play an ever bigger role in helping us understand why the ball behaves as it does and therefore how we can improve it. This picture, titled The Historical Ball, is a commemoration of the footballs played with for generations and of some of the best players who played with them. It shows the evolution in the design and construction of the football by assembling a spherical ball-like shape weaved from the outlines of the panel shapes and designs of the official World Cup and European Championship match balls from the first World Cup in 1930 till the postponed Euro 2020. Surrounding this historical ball, it displays the five platonic solids and the truncated icosahedron and how these fundamental mathematical geometries known since antiquity have inspired innovations in the design of the football over the past century. The next piece, titled The Geometrical Ball, is an ode to the classical 32-panel ball sewn together from 20 hexagons and 12 pentagons, and recognized by young and old across the world as the soccer ball. This pattern or geometry is called a truncated icosahedron, and the picture pays tribute to its significance to the game of football by presenting definitions, expressions, and drawings of the famous geometry. The picture also acknowledges its existence on Earth and in interstellar space as the so-called carbon-60 football molecule at a scale 275 million times smaller than a size 5 football. Last but not least, the picture is a celebration of the contribution to the game of football by Eichel Nielsen, the Danish national team goalkeeper in the 1940s and 50s and founder of the Select Ball Company, who first introduced the ball design based on the truncated icosahedron. The third and final work in this ball trilogy is titled The Physical Ball. It tells the story in words, equations, diagrams and images of the intimate relationship between the millimeter thin spherical shell that is the modern football and the air inside and outside of it. It presents the relationships between the velocity and spin of the ball and the nature of flow of air around it, either orderly or chaotic. And it recognizes the experimental science that has led to our understanding of the lift and drag forces on the ball that we players unknowingly have learned to take advantage of as we kick, pass, and control the ball. Hopefully you found this presentation interesting. I believe that the purposeful and thoughtful use of science and art can create a symbiosis or a harmony that can amplify the artistic expression in ways that makes it more powerful and, and gratifying. It can invite you to explore the art in ways that triggers your curiosity or your joy of discovery 
to make the experience more uh, thrilling and gratifying. It's my experience that by blending science and art, people interact with the art in a way that is more inspiring to them and to me. And so if you want to learn more about my artwork, please visit my website at sorenmybom.com and or contact me at art at sorenmybom.com. Thank you for watching.